this is the orientation session, but it's okay if you've been here before. And the idea here is to give you a sense of the content we have and uh, really where we are coming from, and also a sense of um, you know how we can be a resource for you. So, and uh, again, for us, the reward in this is that uh, uh, you end up create you know continuing to create uh, innovative learning experiences for our learners, our students, and the the report back we ask is to let us know what you're doing. That's the one. Um, very explicit give because that helps us to report back to the very generous uh, supporters of our program as well. So, so with that, I will get started. And again, I won't do too much of a delivery on PowerPoint, but let me just get started and um, uh, you know give you a little bit of background. And as you saw in here, this is the PK Kim Foundation uh, Business for Good program. Uh, and uh, you will recognize the term subsistence marketplaces just so you understand the origins uh, as well as the the synergies that we are creating um, as well. And so some of this content will be familiar to you from before. Some of it is absolutely new and so on. So just, just wanted to uh, uh, mention that. Um, and so today what we'll do very quickly is we'll start with acknowledgements and then briefly the journey that brought us here. And then the resources we have, and we we'll let you kind of explore the resources and give us some top of mind brainstorming and questions that come to mind fundamentally on how this can help you in your own journey as educators. And we will certainly talk about next steps. The punchline I want to start with and end with is very simple. Let's not get too caught up with words and titles of courses. Please consider us as ingredients, as a resource, and that way you will see that this content is very pliable for a variety of learners in a variety of settings. Um, and uh, so don't take something literal as in, you know, this can be only used here or there. And you'll see that not only is it ply you know, very uh, fungible, so to speak, it's also something we have experience using in a variety of different courses and settings. And we will certainly be very happy to share this with you. The second big thing I want to say is that uh, and the way it is working out is we are doing these orientation sessions. And then from this comes a second cohort who, who have more specific uh, things in mind, who send us their syllabi. And then we've had one second session. Of course, we are still in the orientation mode. And we've had one second session where we've delved a little deeper as well. And finally, we also want to do this in a regional way, such as for African universities and Latin American universities and so on. So having said that, let me start with the acknowledgements. And really, we are here because of some amazing uh, institutions and specifically an amazing foundation, uh, the DK Kim Foundation, uh, which uh, I've had the the real um, you know pleasure of um, you know uh, of being supported by and working with. So I want to start there. And Mr. Kim, uh, who's based in Los Angeles, is an amazing human being who has. Uh, you know, created this foundation. And in the course of my joining Loyola Marymount and, at the, and as this course was being designed, um, Mr. Kim and Rene joined us uh, to observe what we do. And, and as a result, we have this unique program. Uh, with me is our my partner in crime, Noriko Sato Ward, as well. And so I'm going to start out by just having Noriko welcome you, and then I would request Renee to welcome you as well before I go on to the rest of the thing. Noriko, please go ahead. Well, good morning, good afternoon, good evening from around the world. My name is Noriko. I have been uh, working with Professor Madhu for the past almost four years, but officially in the role of being the assistant director of the DK Kim uh, Business for Good program at Loyola Marymount University's uh, College for Business Administration. And it's a pleasure to welcome you here. I am doing behind the scenes of what Professor Madhu's magic and orchestration happens. So please, uh, after this uh, session, if you have any questions, Please, I think Professor Madhu is faster at replying, but uh, feel free <laughs> to email me. And uh, <clears throat> it is my pleasure to welcome you. And I would like to pass the baton on to Renee, who is our very generous supporter with our programming that we do at uh, CBA uh, with the Business for Good program. So Renee. 
Oh, thank you, Noriko. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening to everyone. Um, it's an honor once again to hop on here. And I just want to, and Madhu said something interesting in the beginning about um, the adaptability of this program. Like we may, they may do it this way at LMU, but um, we've been able to take many of the principles um, from the work that we do in South America and also that we're using over in Korea. So um, this definitely is a program that adapts to whatever community you may be working um, in or with, with students, with community leaders, government leaders. So it's it's just a, a just a wealth of knowledge. And um, Madhu and Narika are very generous in sharing their time, expertise, um, the thousand questions I throw at them a week, trying to figure things out. I'm greatly appreciative for their um, uh, support and involvement. And I've worked for the DK Kim Foundation for in doing development for about seven years um, and, uh, and truly enjoy it. So thanks, Madhu and Noriko, for including me. Welcome to everyone and um, look forward to seeing how all of us can continue to support each other doing you know good things in the world. So thank you. Thank you, Renee. And I just also wanted to mention the, the work that the Kim Foundation does in Colombia. I mean, it is for the most vulnerable and it's a very holistic program. And also, Rene, we so much appreciate your involvement. I think the best projects are ones where that happens, you know, and then we challenge each other. So this is very good. I wanted to go back to what Noriko said and actually translate it for you. She said magic and orchestration. What she really meant was idiocy and craziness. I just wanted you to know that, okay? Just to translate synonyms, you know, <laughs> in my case. So again, so uh, as you know, there have been a number of universities in my own journey, and I'm so grateful to them. Started with Minnesota, where I did my PhD, but a, a very long time at Illinois, uh, you know, where a lot of the foundational work on subsistence marketplaces developed. And now they're great, really, magical partner in Loyola Marymount, particularly because of people like Noriko and Rene. Um, and so that's been our journey. With, with subsistence marketplaces, we have, you know, been at the intersection of so many people, you know, uh, starting more than 25 years ago, uh, our, you know, we've had so many students. We've been very fortunate. We've had almost 1,000 students a year. Um, you know, over the last 15 years or so, we've worked with so many researchers. Uh, we've had community members. You know, we are here because of the generosity of people in the community for sharing their lives um, with us. Uh, you know, I'll never forget uh, so many interviews, but one where uh, a, a lady in distress told me that I'm what I'm sharing with you is I'm only sharing with you and then I share it with God, you know. It's this kind of generosity that has led us to build this bottom-up approach. Um, and, uh, you know, and this, that's why we are here where we are, because of that generosity as well. Um, and then along with that, I wanted to mention uh, educators, because we have, you know, this is a very systematic approach to reaching educators. You will recall in our conferences, we've done a lot of forums and we have our website and so on. But this is a much more systematic approach, thanks to the Kim Foundation for reaching educators and supporting you and so on. Um, and partners, uh, again, as I mentioned, we have taught this course and you know, the, the, with the content in so many different ways. Uh, currently, we teach a business for good first year class that I had the privilege of designing that reaches all first years and transfer students. So we've had about more than 3000 students in the last three and a half years or so. Um, and similarly, at, at Illinois, I, I taught a, a module and the capstone project for Business 101. Again, that reached 600, 800 students and so on. We taught a year-long class, um, you know, uh, with uh, engineering design business students with a lot of corporate and uh, social enterprise partners. You know, we, we had the privilege of working with Abbott over seven years and John Deere and Wall Flipper and so on. And so, you know, these are the experiences we bring. We have had international immersions with about uh, 500 students over 13 years. We have also had uh, international immersion conferences. The next one is in Morocco. And so lots of different partners. And I just feel very fortunate, to be honest, to be at the intersection of just some amazing people. I also want to mention our own social enterprise of marketplace literacy, which we have had the, the privilege of reaching a lot of particularly women around the world. And with the Kim Foundation program, uh, we now have a focus on youth and that is really reinvigorating us post-pandemic as well. So these are some of the things we've been doing. And just, you know, it's really being at the intersection of amazing people is the best way to say this as far as the journey goes. Um, and I also wanted to mention, um, again, as I said, the journey that brings us here. 
uh, the researchers as well, the educators and, and so on. So it's really at the, as, uh, you know, at the intersection of a lot of different initiatives. Um, and Business for Good, as the course is called, came about um, um, once I was at the Loyola Mary Mount, and I think it was a magical fit, thanks to the leadership of the college, because they have a mission of business as a force for good as part of the college's uh, really the, the approach. And so here I had the entire stage to create a semester long um, course. It's two credit hours as these credit hours go, you know. Uh, and uh, and so um, uh, I, I just wanted to mention that, um, you know, that's part of, you know, where we are as well. Speaking of uh, intersections, and uh, thank you for the very timely reminder, Enrico. We have some amazing team members who are here, and I had asked them to join us just to say hello, uh, uh, you know, at the beginning of this call, uh, uh, because I want you to know that this is a an effort which has always had field team members throughout the world, and currently here are some amazing people who work with us. So I have Bertrand from Uganda. Uh, Bertrand, I, if you cannot uh, turn on video, that's okay, but if you can just say hi, that'll be great. Please go ahead. Hello, I'm Bertrand, I'm from Uganda, the team. And Bertrand, uh, don't be so shy. Yeah, Bertrand's an amazing videographer. Tell us what you do as well. Oh, yeah, yes. Um, so I'm a videographer. I do make music videos, TV commercials, and uh, also with um, uh, this uh, this program, um, they be for good uh, program we've been uh, implementing such we've been using videos um, video games uh, now we're developing uh, some mobile application to be able to uh, to teach about the marketplace so yeah. very good very good one minute now let me do a mute off Oh no no! I, I think it's my it's 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 my YouTube playing, folks. It's not your fault. <laughs> there you go. See, see the drama that I created there. This is all Hollywood stuff, you know. Just create some drama, but it's actually a YouTube video that started playing. Bertrand, thank you. Bertrand is based in Kampala, and Bertrand uh, is always willing to explore technologies and so on for us. So, uh, let me go to. I think uh, Malam, you're there. Malam is in Tanzania. Malam, are you there? Yes. Hi. Please go ahead, Malim. Hello. Uh, so my name is Malim from Tanzania, Russia. Um, basically, now I'm uh, doing research, uh, working with a uh, professor, uh, developing contents using audio production, video, and uh, now we're pushing for reach. Uh, in Tanzania, we have been doing that, but now we're also pushing for, for uh, reach globally. So thanks to Madhu, uh, I've gained a lot of experience, uh, bottom-up concept, and uh, helping other people in uh, Tanzania, especially in the northern zone, has helped a lot. Thank you. Thanks, Malum. And Malum, it's okay. I, I, I didn't um, need Lulu here as well, or Kupasa, unless they are there. Is, is, is Kupasa there by any chance? If not, don't worry. Oh, uh, no, I, no, Mr. Kupasa, no, I don't No see. problem. Don't, don't worry at all. No problem at all. Uh, excellent. So I just wanted to give you a sense of the course um, and then uh, share material so you can reflect on your own. But remember, let's not get caught up with words, you know, specific titles of courses, etc. Think of us as ingredients, right? So in this course, first year students essentially work through a semester long project where they create a business for good uh, uh, plan. And uh, and so in, in doing that, they do a number of different things. They do individual assignments, you know, the reanalysis of readings, immersion, and we'll show you some of these immersions. Uh, they do virtual interviews, which they're going to do next week with interviewees fitting their project across the world. And you next week, Malam and um, Bertrand and others, and we have a field team member in Honduras as well. In at least four countries, uh, you know, we will have interviewees fitting these projects where our first year students are interviewing them. And that is something I have never done anywhere before. I mean, this is the kind of experience we want to provide for our students. This is uh, for a project that focuses on people with low income wherever they are in the world whether it's international or domestic 
and it is a project where they have to understand the need uh, design a solution or you know basically develop a product and and then come up with a business plan and we particularly emphasize in this course the idea of business for good that's the name of the course and therefore it has to be a a, a business plan that does not depend on subsidies or a csr and so on that's just for this course the same content you'll see can apply for a nonprofit course. It can apply for a CSR course. Uh, we once had somebody ask if we can create a course on DEI using this content. It is a it is very fungible that way. So we we do a variety of individual assignments. We then have group assignments that all the way start with you know in understanding the problem and the opportunity to the solution, the business plan, uh, and these are students in groups of typically five from different majors. And then they have a public poster session, a celebratory public poster session. Alex, you'll remember from Illinois, some of the ones that, that you helped us with in Business 101. And in this public poster session, they pitch to judges who act as investors. And we're so grateful to people like Renee who volunteer for these events. And, um, and then we have a final presentation. All this is in the first semester. So look at all the challenges. You have to understand people very different from yourself, not only culturally, but socioeconomically. That's the trick, right? As you know, with subsistence marketplaces. The activities they do are poverty simulation, virtual interviews. We have recorded interviews in a lot of different topics, video and image-based immersion, 360 video we have been producing forever, uh, you know, and, and so on. So varieties of different things that we uh, offer them. Um, I also wanted to point out that um, with respect to the, um, uh, with res well, it'll come back to me soon. But uh, yeah, so these are some of the things that uh, students do uh, in, in the course of this, uh, you know, this experience. Uh, so this is a framework for the project. So it has these distinct parts. And uh, basically, you can see it's a, it's a startup. So we really believe in students taking ownership of the startup. In fact, uh, in a in a previous uh, version, uh, you know, I recall that we would even when we had corporations involved, we would always tell students, "You take the role of pitching to corporations as wanting to be an autonomous unit." That way, the focus is on their startup, right? And so we we really like that approach, but that's not the only approach. And with the mission and so on, we have the problem or opportunity. And I just wanted to mention in this case, when they talk about the need, we have. Um, roughly divided up into umbrella topics so far of um, education, health or nutrition, and entrepreneurship or livelihood or agriculture. And the reason for that is when we have a throughput of 150 plus projects a year, um, going on even higher, I believe, uh, it is very important for us to pre-select for virtual interviews. So these virtual interviews happen where, you know, we're gonna have 10 breakout rooms, we're going to have about 90 to 100 students in each session. And then we are basically going to have pre-identified interviews. We cannot customize the interviewees by project. We customize it by umbrella topic. But within that, they are free to choose whatever they want. So if it's education, we'll typically have a student and a teacher. But the students can pick non-formal education. They can, can pick school supplies for primary school education. They can pick health education. So we don't constrain the creativity of students to pick any topic within the umbrella we provide, uh, and they choose the umbrella as well. And we don't restrict their creativity in choosing the geography. One thing we say is be specific, don't just say entire Africa and so on. Um, and so th that is part of what we do. And then they go on to a solution, uh, implementation, and sustainable outcomes and an investment ask. So I want to point out, we have two full examples of this worked out, and we'll share that with you as well. And this is a template that's evolved over many, many years. I've used different variations for different courses. Uh, we have an online MBA course I used to teach with all, almost 500 executives where I had a different version and so on. And uh, we are very happy to share it. I think uh, if you asked me the essence of all this, I would say um, provide the structure, and the examples, but let students be creative in their choice of you know what they want to focus on and so on, and let the peer pressure and the public you know interface with the marketplace produce some magic. And we have found, generally speaking, 
uh, just the quality being very consistent across already at LMU, I would say we are at, um, uh, you know, we're going on about, um, uh, I guess, uh, 600 projects or so. And then at Illinois, there have been many, many more as well. So I just wanted to point out that that semi-structure is important for this to happen. So having said that, um, I just want to say very quickly, the big picture, we believe that exposure is education, right? And unless students are exposed to a variety of contexts, uh, you know, uh, how are they learning to be competitive? How are they learning to be ethical? How are they learning to be responsible and so on, right? So we really believe that exposure and particularly uh, beyond the middle and upper middle class to lower socioeconomic status, which is a driving force behind even creating this subfield of subsistence marketplaces, right? Uh, secondly, we believe that going global can actually inform people locally. It's almost like, you know, somebody comes into, you know, in, you know, right now I'm in the middle of Illinois and somebody comes from small town Illinois to small town Champaign and then I've taken them to Tanzania and it just opens up a world and then they realize, wow, these same problems are there right here. You know? So it, for us, it's always been a global to local path, I would say. Um, and then we also very much believe that economic sustainability is important. Uh, in these, in every one of these projects, but that's because it's a business for good course. Uh, we also have this whole bottom-up approach that they go through, and that is as big a takeaway as anything, uh, in my opinion. And very often we we ask them to be bottom-up before top-down, even in identifying needs in unique ways or coming up with solutions, products, and so on. And one of our our philosophies here is uh, very often when we have the students focus on the need and opportunity, they'll say, but how will I make a profitable business out of it? And we'll say, don't worry. In other words, we'll figure that out when we get there. Don't let that constrain you here. So don't let the downstream constrain the upstream. Similarly, we say that with the product as well. And we, we help them. We work with them, and, you know, just nudging them along as, uh, you know, uh, as we go along. So, um, we have a variety of resources. We have virtual immersion resources, 360 video, uh, day in the life videos. We have image immersions. We have an online poverty simulation. We have content slides, content videos, project deliverables, as uh, you know, uh, and so on, uh, and virtual interviews and so on. And very soon we'll start posting so that you can go in and explore. And uh, Noriko, we'll divide it up so that you post our. Uh, content slides and content videos, and I'll post the YouTube kinds of things. And uh, and so that'll be wonderful. So those are the, con that's the content we have. And this is uh, really the matrix of all the things we have that we will continue to populate. And we will share this PDF with you as well. You can see that we have content videos by topic, content slide decks by topic. Uh, we constantly evolve them. We have a lot of other content and we're constantly adding content. I'll just give you an example. As a result of one of these webinars, we have now expanded the recorded interviews, you know, to, to include more one or two other topics. Now, we can't do that endlessly, but it was useful to say, okay, what are some other domains? Because there's something that was in our minds and you gave us the nudge, you know. So just wanted to point that out as well uh, as part of what's uh, going on. We are approaching the end. So let me keep my promise and just say that, you know, uh, it's been a pleasure. Thank you. And we will follow up and we will make sure that, you know, uh, we are in touch. And uh, I think we will create a session two for all of you where we can explore more deeply while also interacting offline. And we are happy to do one-on-ones as well because I think this is just very stimulating for us as well. So thank you. I think the biggest compliment from all of you is that you find this worthwhile and we will be a resource for you and it will not just be a 30,000 feet drop and moving along. Thank you so much.